Poulison. Two designers who can't be defined using accepted definitions and do not conform to the norms of their professional worlds. An architect who craves for the empirical, an engineer who is guided by elegance. But what's special about us is that I see him more as an architect than myself, and that he sees me more as an engineer than he sees himself. So we operate very pragmatically and really look for the nature of what things should be like. Starting from his engineering, Laurent is of course obliged to search for the nature. They are at the service of the search process. One is at the service of the other, and with such concentration that they themselves are no longer present with their own egos. An architect, An architect usually does his thing, but I'm not interested in doing my thing. I'm interested in what it should be. So that's a completely different procedure. We don't speak of imposing dimensions on a form anymore, but we speak of finding a shape that has certain functions. The client asked for a covered outside space with as few obstacles and boundaries as possible. It should create space and inspire. What I think I have done with Takimoni is defining the question correctly and putting that question forward for 100% and entirely to Laurent. And that was my assignment. It's interesting that the result is a bit surprising for us. There's no formal desire to have that object, which is the result of a mental process. In fact, the result belongs to neither one of us. It's not ours. It was the confirmation of natural patterns, a purified illustration of their attitude and respect for the nature of things. The things we do, it's not like one plus one is two. It doesn't result in two. It's something new that is more than simply architecture plus engineering. Also in completely different projects, such as changing the use of warehouses in the old port of Antwerp, they applied their unusual procedure. The nature of that project told us that it would exist for a short period only and that after 15 years it might be demolished. Automatically this becomes a factual matter. So you say, everything I add and build here should be low budget, because within 15 years the economic costs should be recovered. That's a social commitment you can't ignore. So it's almost because of the judicial context that you are starting to think like that. Ney Poulison are always in search of the essence of building and the realization of solutions based on specific starting points, so that aesthetics become an unexpected surprise. I always tell my staff members here at the office that the answers we give are not always important, but the questions we ask ourselves are. The winding pedestrian and cyclist bridge in Kortrijk once again seems a peculiar but actually quite obvious solution. The first thing we questioned was the cause of action. Once that cause is defined, it will be nature that will help us find the rest of the undertaking. Another totally different project was a house construction in an enclosed inner part of a housing block. Here we are on an island within a block with a residual space. Therefore, you try to design a building which is as close as possible to nature. Three houses were realized in one volume to keep it as compact as possible. Using materials and constructions whenever they're needed, the bridge in Knocke is a textbook example. So what did we do? We know that if there is a supported area, we don't need this material. It has no use. And from there on, we optimized it. Finally, with one element, this plate, folded and cut, we were able to make the complete bridge. In this project too, it's hard to position both men within the standard notion of their training as an architect and an engineer. And it's certain they would not achieve results without the joining together of their ways of thinking.
It is the, economy it is the ecology and the economy that cause it to look the way it looks. The Osterweil link closes the northern ring road around Antwerp. It's the missing link in 10 kilometers of motorway that has to be finished in four years and for a budget of 2 billion euros. The project consists of the construction of a tunnel under the River Schelt and a bridge spanning the port. The route goes across both urban area and valuable natural landscapes. The making of the Oosterweel link actually comprises only 50% of the project because the other 50% is the integration of that link in the existing urban landscape. The right question here is not how do I make a bridge? Everybody can make a bridge. But how do you do the correct integration? How do you create a design that can live for another 50 years? We were asked to create an interlocal link, while in fact a city and its inhabitants are burdened with this dominant structure. We were almost more focused on the integration of this link than on the link itself. Of course, this bridge will be this bridge and this tunnel will be this tunnel. But how is this bridge put in the landscape and where does this tunnel lead to? So we focused on the integration and not the subject itself. An international contest was organized and this plan came out victorious on account of its specific approach. One of the things we tried and we succeeded in is that it's no longer a problem because the people now are proud of this object. Now it's a part of the city of Antwerp. Instead of a negative thing, it has become a positive symbol of the city. When you succeed in the creation of such a bridge in a natural way, it becomes part of the natural evolution of the environment and an object that inspires. Integration also means fitting in with the local culture. Ney and Poulissen have tried to work as craftsmen by the simplicity of the constructions, taking into account the remaining natural environment. The other bureaus have made a statement. The other consultants have made a statement and we have made, shall we say, an understatement. With the Osterwil link, Ney and Poulissen have gained know-how in the field of traffic flow. They want to place these skills at the service of others. One of the projects is the construction of a 1050 km embankment along the Ganges on which an eight-lane motorway will be built. The project comprises the construction of more than 200 bridges and relocation of 400 small villages and towns. I think that with our experience with infrastructure development works and surely with the complexity of the Osterwe link, there must be a coherent approach. The project should not be cut into little pieces with different kinds of solutions. However, there should be some sort of general vision. We could work out one big junction completely and conceive elements from there which can be copied onto the larger whole. I think that we have built up this know-how in Europe by making many mistakes. The people in India should be aware that the place where this gigantic infrastructure will be must be appreciated and valued. It's much more than just making an infrastructure. It's an infrastructure in an environment. If you build a concrete ring around a city without taking urban expansion into account, you could jeopardize its future. And we believe that we can avoid these mistakes in India.